Hello and welcome to my studio. I'm going to be working today on a painting I have titled Linda's Garden. I always enjoy and appreciate your comments. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. This is the background color. I'm not sure exactly what happened with my lighting, but I'm having some issues because I typically have my my easel or my table set up next to my sliding glass door, and today it's raining, so not much light or maybe not very consistent light anyway. I'll be working with my LED, LED lamps, but in that case, that's probably accounting for some of the changes in the color so um, bear with me in that respect i did want to mention that i'm using a wide soft um, synthetic brush i don't want to have a lot of brush marks right now it looks like i have a lot of brush marks but in fact i will be smoothing them out as i get my paint applied and we'll do a second layer to this canvas. Also, I'm using ultramarine blue, quin quinacridone violet, and hooker's green. And I'm using my gesso for white. I actually could have combed my hair a little better today. Didn't mean to get it in view of this video. In my preliminary painting with the acrylics, I'm trying to establish placement of my flowers. I've actually thought a lot about what I want to do with this painting, but once the brush touches the canvas, things tend to change a little bit. So um, no telling exactly where I'm going to go, but I'll keep feeling my way through until I'm satisfied. And then I'll call it done. Well, I have completed my underpainting and I have some idea where I'm going to put my flowers. I have decided I'm going to put a lot more flowers than what I have and my flowers are going to be less purple. I have um, decided to go over this um, underpainting, which is in acrylics, I've decided to do in oils and I'm going to be using um, a variety of reds. This is a uh, rose quinacridone. I'm using cadmium barium red extra deep and cadmium red medium hue, cadmium red deep hue, which is probably going to be very close to one of these others. Uh, this is sap green. I'll be using the cobalt blue and white in my sky. And I'm going to be using a combination of um, Payne's gray and cadmium yellow medium 
and cadmium yellow deep hue and cadmium barium yellow light um, to mix my greens with the Payne's gray. Um, these make a variety of greens mixed with the Payne's gray, which I do like a lot. And of course, I'm going to be using a lot of white. So that's my agenda for today. Because I've been painting for so many years, probably about 40 by now, I have a conglomeration of brands of paint ranging from the better to student grade, which is our, what I recommend for my students. The Windsor and Newton. If they Winton do the brand. job that you want them to do, and there's no reason to spend a lot of money for them. So I use them, and if they're cheap brushes, they don't hold up, I just throw them out. But that's where I'm going today. So uh, hang in there with me and we'll be at the painting process here in a moment. I'll be speeding this up. I'm also gonna be using my liquid for this session because it thins my paint for one thing and makes it dry faster. It also leaves a bit of a sheen on my painting, which I like. You'll also notice that my oil painting is not covering up the painting underneath, but not to worry because that's exactly what I wanted. I want to be able to see what I've painted before and I want to make sure that there's at least a ghost image there. To add interest to my sky, I'm not only creating some clouds, but some of my cloud formations I'm trying to make somewhat um, horizontal so that it'll add more interest but at the same time I don't want my sky to complete excuse me to compete with my flowers Okay, this light is better, not so many reflections. Although I've been painting for a long time, I have not been videotaping for very long, and I have made a lot of changes over the period of time that I have been making these videos, and one of those changes has been in my lighting and I'm trying to do this on a budget so I'm continually trying different ways to make this happen and make it more effective but um, that's just part of the learning curve in going from live painting to videos so I hope you will gain something from the tutorial despite my lighting issues
I have taken some time out from working on this painting to look at it and analyze it somewhat and decided that I didn't like the foreground. Um, everything was a little too level and um, repetitious and a little too dark. So I've begun to work on the background once again. Uh, excuse me, not the background, but the foreground. And as you noticed, um, I've, I've added some more grasses on the far right. And I'm also going to be working on the other side. In this stage, I'm establishing my lilac blooms, and I'm doing so by really positioning my body in different places so that I can follow the angle of my bloom. And also notice that I'm changing the position of my brush to keep from having repeat patterns. Um, in a few moments, I'll be putting on some highlights and you'll see that even more distinctly. Um, also, I'm going to change the 
position of the canvas and give you a close-up of one of the blossoms and show you what I mean by changing positions of my brush. As I'm applying these highlights, you can see what I'm talking about with moving the brush about. To remove unwanted spots on a canvas, the best time to do that, of course, is while the paint is still wet. You will want to take a clean brush put some turpentine in it and just brush it onto that spot and then wipe your brush go back and swipe again and keep doing this until your spot has disappeared but you must keep that brush clean and keep wiping it on your paper towel or your cloth 